everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's weekly energy boost. My name is Ellie Sheva, and I'm here this lovely morning, Monday morning, with David. And we are talking about listening. And as you listen to the very words exit my mouth, you may be thinking that it's not, this is an episode you can skip because you love listening. You're a good listener. You're an active listener. You've read books and taken workshops and you could give your own episode about listening. Don't, don't hit, hit the what, skip button yet because this is not your average podcast on listening. Mm. This is the opportunity we have this week and what the, what, what the Kabbalists teach about the gift that we can unlock in this week is to be the best uh, filterers, to really be conscious connoisseurs, let's say, conscious consumers of what we hear and what we put out there. Now, we've given endless episodes, we've had endless episodes about speaking and words and language. And just last week, we were talking about talking to God. So instead of talking about talking, we're talking about listening. <clears throat> and every week, we try to provide our listeners with the most powerful and practical tools to navigate the coming week. And through that, you can glean these nuggets of, of timeless wisdom. It's not really the, the fact that it's an opportunity for this week just creates the platform for us. But the lessons and the understanding are really applicable anytime, any place. And so this week, as we talk about why it's so difficult to, why words are such a Achilles heel for us, whether it is in the, the speaking or the listening, hopefully every one of you who are listening right now will walk away with that nugget that helps you identify another way in which you shoot yourself in the foot probably every day of your life. Well, I think just a basic place to start is that we we are the ones that determine the, what the universe sends to us and the flow of information that comes to us or doesn't come to that's us. Such, by the way, that's such a difficult concept for people to grasp. That, that how, Why would I have asked for this? Why would I want you know, said yeah. chaotic situation. How, do, how am I asking for it? And, and people are, people are making that comment from just the point, from a very limited point of view, thinking that if I, if I'm conscious of, it's the asking that I'm conscious of that should determine what's happening in my life. But as we've always said, there's an unconscious asking that we're all doing, right? That subconscious desire that competes with the desire that I, that everybody might know about me, right? So you may tell everyone, you want to be a successful human being, but deep down inside, there's another desire that's competing with that initial desire, which is actually, I do not want to be successful. I do not want to be in a healthy relationship because, I don't know, uh, success breeds um, um, all these other negative traits that I saw my father have and he abused my mother, so I don't want to be successful. Or, I don't want to be in a healthy relationship because I actually seen other healthy relationships and they're very boring. I like the drama of someone who kind of likes me, kind of doesn't like me, slightly abusive, uh, and then I can always work to earn their love because that's exciting. Right? I need something to work for. And what's the point of just having an amazing human being who's just great? So, so obviously, what is the point? What's the point of that? <laughs> just comes in a beautiful package, all ready to go. Just wants me to be happy. He's What's already, wrong with that? He's already figured out his life. Cares about me. Doesn't have any insecurity or fears. Very plain. Very plain. Yawn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give me some drama here, right? Okay. So th there's obviously no one will say that out loud. But deep down inside, these are the desires that they have that are competing. Now, what's powerful about that, we've always talked about that, what's powerful about that is based on those desires, we are attracting certain messages. So, and the creator is always giving us what, the, the, always sending the signal according to the desire. And this is important for all of us to every moment that we can to hit a reset and say, regardless of what I want, or I think I want, or it's stuff I don't even know about, I am asking the Creator to send me truly, truly, truly what's the best for me. 
and I'm going to let go of my opinions and my logic. Uh, because my opinions and my logic are totally limiting me. Totally limiting me. Because as soon as you have an opinion, you shrink your vessel. As soon as you have an opinion, you shrink your vessel. Uh, Why is that? An opinion is, is a defined desire. So if I, like, give me an example of an opinion. What would be an opinion someone might have? Being in a relationship is bad. Okay, being in a relationship is bad. Um, being, uh, b- being monogamous is bad. Um, uh, all men are bad. All women. And I said people say this kind of stuff, right? After they've been hurt or something, you start to develop an opinion. Maybe you looked at some data and you say, well, this is how it is. Uh, and obviously the most successful people are the ones who are doing something opposite what the majority of people are doing with their opinions, right? So once a majority of people have a certain opinion, the trailblazers realize I should do the opposite of that, which is an interesting concept because the visionaries, those trailblazers, see how limited opinions can be, especially when masses of people adopt that same opinion. Mm. So we always want to be in a place where we're a blank canvas and we're giving space for the creator to just constantly give us the highest level of content, information, guidance, and wisdom. How do you do that? Think about what kind of a person you are maybe in your work or amongst your friends. Are you the kind of person where your boss, your colleagues, or your friends feel they can't tell you everything? They're very limited in what they can share with you. Are you the kind of spouse that maybe your significant other feels, they, they oh, I can't say that to her, or I can't say that to him? Because either they're going to explode or they're going to get sad or they're going to take it personally. So what happens is we've branded ourselves as a person with a very small vessel and very limited in what I should be able to hear or receive. So not only are we cutting people off from telling us messages, but we're also cutting the creator off because the creator must listen to what, what our desires are. I, I, you remind me, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like flabbergasted here because David is t- just touched on something I was reading about uh, just the other day that is written. Rav Ashlag, who's one of the, who's the founder of the Kabbalah Center a hundred years ago, he wrote different essays about different topics. And in, uh, in one of them, in a book called Wisdom of Truth, he talks about how lack of criticism and opposition is actually the at the core of all uh, i wish i could remember the exact words all advancement all like that we grow through criticism and opposition yep and anyone who's not growing or any anything in our life that is in a state of atrophy if it's a relationship if it's our own personal growth if we're stuck in our career it, it's it's an important and I'll con- Obviously, it's connected to listening because if you're that kind of person that David was just talking about that's branded themselves as somebody who cannot be confronted, who cannot be told the whole picture, who cannot handle hearing the truth or the criticism or the feedback, basically what you're doing is you are stalemating yourself. Mm. And what's interesting, I had this conversation with one of our colleagues and I said, I, th- I think, I see a lot of people who really benefited in that sense, benefit is not the right word, they think they've benefited from the whole work from home, isolated, insulated, there's no buffer, there's no cushion, there is a buffer now, there's a cushion between me and my coworkers, whereas before we sat in the open plan office and we heard one another talking to clients and customers and and now there's no that feedback loop has been closed gotcha. right that that the, and i w- i was saying you know in our office we have an open workspace where there's desks all over the room and you can hear other teachers talking and i love that because i learn so much when i'm not talking i'm not the one talking i can listen plug in and listen to these other amazing people teaching but also the the opportunity it provides us with is actually to give each other criticism and feedback as well and there are people that you know you can't say that you can't do that with 
there's people that you know that they want it, they welcome it, they invite it. They're probably talking at the top of their lungs so that everybody can hear them and and bring it down to to earth. But that's that openness to receive is actually what Rav Ashlag says is a, uh, what's the word, benchmark for growth. To be able to listen to the opposition and not label it as wrong, talking about opinions. He goes into a whole discussion about right and wrong. When right and wrong is an opposition. Mm-hmm. Opposition is being open to a different thought, a different perspective, a different solution. And the truth is, even in... What he says when it comes to the realm of thought, any kind of innovation, any kind of growth, any kind of, um, I, it's funny because I'm thinking even in terms of medicine and technology, you have to be open to hear somebody else's perspective and through the collaboration of multiple perspectives, you might come to a new innovation, a new right. strategy, a new, uh, uh, an approach that maybe we didn't, we didn't see before. But when it comes to like my own personal life, don't tell me what to do or right. don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. Right. You, can, you can do your best and still be open to hear other ways of doing it. And that to me, listening, I, I listen to a lot of other people who speak huh. in, a, in a similar way to what we do. And I'm always looking for new ways to, to say things, new ways to present things, new. I want to hear, you know, if I'm giving a class about, uh, I don't know, sharing, I want to hear. What are people saying these days about sharing, about generosity, about kindness, about giving? I don't want, just want to be in my cave rehashing the same. Yes, the, well, the wisdom is ancient, but it's got to be practical and, and relevant. The, que- well, the question is how? How? Like, I think, you know, I think everybody will say they want that. How do I make sure that the information flows to me so I'm not wasting my time? I'm not wasting my time in doing a, a habit or behavior that's going to suck hours and days and months and years from my life, something that's going to take me to a bad place. If we could actually hear all the messages immediately, this is actually the most merciful way to autocorrect our path as opposed to what most people do, which is sometimes they give away years and years of their lives to just learn the same lesson they could have learned if they could hear it. Now, there are people who may come and we may hear, we may hear people telling us what to do, but sometimes we still need to put our hand, we need to touch the fire and see like if it's really hot. And so it's not about, it's not even about people coming to tell us what we need to do. It's about having a profound, having a profound realization once somebody does say something. Well, don't you think it starts with intention? Like you said, you have a desire to, you say in the morning, the universe, God, creator, light, please send me a message about X. And I think that that's the starting point. You know, as, as you were talking, I was reminded, you and I, we were, we were together with, with a bunch of other people. Saturday, remember I had to go on, I don't, I don't use technology on Saturday, which is one of the best ways to kind of just detox. But so I, don't, I, w- I wasn't driving and I had to walk probably about three miles. It was, well, actually, no, five miles. It was five. It was a five mile walk there and back, something like that. It's at least four. It was at least four, yeah. Um, and I had nothing to do, and I was like, oh, I have to go to this thing where Elisheva was at, and I had to walk. And I said, all right, this is going to be about an hour and twenty minutes of walking, and no phone, no nothing, no music. I, what What do you have to do besides talk to the Creator? And I said, well, this is a very powerful time for me to do that. So as I was walking. I was just talking with the creator. So if you drove through Beverly Hills on Saturday and you, you saw a guy walking and talking, talking to, to himself, himself. that yeah. was David Gamm. That, that, and I always wonder if people see me doing that, what are they going to think? As but long as you're not moving your hands and making gestures. I was. I was moving my hands. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it's funny you say it. I was walking and moving my hands because I was trying to be intense about what I was saying. Anyways, I was asking for, I was asking just because I didn't know what specifically to ask for, so I was just asking for the general, I, I want to delete my current operating system, and I would like to know what the higher operating system is. Like, I want to do the update. I'm forcing an update into my spiritual operating system. And, and I can tell you, after that hour, imagine just saying the same thing over and over again for an hour. It felt something very divine, very magical, and it stayed with me that night and the next day. Um, 
and, and the point was that I was I was literally telling the creator, I want to hear, like I want to see, I want to experience, I want this to move faster, like just kind of letting go of old belief systems and uh, inviting new ones in. That's probably the most powerful way I know how to do it. And there's no shortcut here, really. Uh, but it is having those conversations with the with the universal force out loud, by the way. <clears throat> it's important that you do it out loud in order to uh, receive this 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 unlimited wisdom that will come to you without uh, without blockage. I'm thinking about people who have don't don't get distracted because you're going to be on the spot in a second. You don't get to take a break now. The in in the work that we do with people, the the main work that we do with individuals is we try to help them get to the core of their if they're open to it, of right. course, the core of their work in this world, their spiritual work. What do they need to transform? What do they need to elevate to grow? And one thing I see come up for a lot of people, David, and I, I know I, I want to hear what you have to say about this, is that a lot of people have a, a, a fear or a worry about being misunderstood. Hmm. And they have a life that supports that they are misunderstood. People don't understand me. I, even if I'm going to say what I think, they're not going to, they don't know, they don't realize, they don't. And, and the reason I'm bringing it up is because we're talking this week about listening and how the universe really is set up, as David mentioned in the beginning of this episode, to give us exactly what we, what we need. And that's not only in the prayers that we make with our mouth, that's really in our behaviors, right? If, if we are growing in our impatience with our loved ones, we are going to attract situations where we could be impatient and then be able to pause and reflect and say, okay, I could be worse. I could be, I could be more impatient right now, but I know that this is something I need to work on and I'm going to step into being more patient. But in the case where somebody communicates and feels that their communication isn't received, how do you, how do you spin that? What exactly? Well, what what we learn is that if that's your tikkun being misunderstood or feeling misunderstood mm -hmm. so your the actors and actresses in your movie are going to behave in a way that supports that so you're going to express something and they're going to say well what i heard you say was blah 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 which is the opposite of what you actually said or sometimes it happens as a pisces i i know that i'm guilty of this where I say it's fine, but I don't mean it's fine, right? That, that the words and the energy are not aligned. And especially where somebody is feeling misunderstood or is, is, has lived a life feeling misunderstood, they're actually coming, now I'm giving away the punchline, I thought this is what you would say, mm -hmm. that I'm basically telling you with my energy to misconstrue what I'm saying to project onto me something that I don't mean because I'm already waiting for that to happen. I know that when I, I'm going to open my mouth, I'm going to be vulnerable and you are going to misunderstand me. Well, one of the reasons why if somebody feels that they're constantly misunderstood is because they think it's their words that are, are communicating what they're feeling. But it's actually, well, imagine the last 24 hours, what your actions, what your thoughts, words, and actions were, even before you talked to this new person. That created forces like angels that, that are bottles of energy. And so then when you do actually talk with this person and you might say 10 words, what they actually hear are what the last 24 hours were. So a lot of times we act one way in front of one person and a different way in front of another person and we're not authentic. The person on the inside is not matching the person on the outside, or maybe you are matching, but you're someone different to somebody else all the time based on what's convenient for you. So the reason why people are misunderstanding you and not connecting to what you're saying is because they're not listening to what you're saying at that moment. They're listening to all you've done in the last day or days or weeks. And it's not like children are most sensitive to this, right? So children are feeling your energy, feeling what you've not just what you're saying to them, they're feeling what you're doing all day and what you've done. 
And so they respond to that collective homogenous, you know, uh, bundle of energy. And that's where the miscommunication can come in. And this is why the Kabbalists say you should talk as, as less as possible because people who talk a lot are then just prone to make more mistakes and use words that are wasteful and then create negative forces. So then the mouth becomes less effective. And it, if you feel like you're someone who constantly misunderstands people, right? You may be on this on the other side of the conversation. Why do, why do people misunderstand also? I was thinking about something else while you were talking. Is because while you're listening to the other person, and now you can understand the challenge that I go through every week on the Weekly Energy Boost, while I'm listening to David, but I'm also thinking about what I'm going to say afterwards... That's okay for a podcast because we're not actually having a meaningful, okay, it's a very meaningful conversation, but we're not really talking to each other. We're talking to you in front of, uh, talking to each other in front of you. If you are already thinking about what you are going to say next, you are not listening. And that's perhaps the number two reason, David gave the number one reason that your energy actually comes before you when you have a conversation and already leaves an impression on the individual that you're going to talk to. It's almost like uh, footsteps in the sand that you're just walking through once you actually, the words start to come out of your mouth. Okay. What I'm talking about is another version of not being present when you're, li David's listening to me right now, but he's also thinking, and when she's done talking, I'm going to talk about that person that came to me that told me about blah, 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 blah. So at a certain point, he stops listening. And then he comes back into the conversation. He's missed 30 seconds. It's not an accusation. It's simple science. And the th 30 seconds that he missed while he was thinking about what he's going to say next, when he puts the first 30 seconds and the third 30 seconds with the th middle 30 seconds missing, he's misunderstanding me. Or he, maybe he already, we, we've been doing this long enough that we can um, fill in the gaps for each other so we don't, don't misunderstand. But when you're having an important conversation with somebody, or even a not important conversation, and you are busy building your case while the other person is talking, you're preparing your rebuttal, before the other person has finished talking, you're actually setting yourself up to misunderstand, to misconstrue, to judge, to, to accuse. And in the end of the day, the reason that doesn't work energetically, it's really actually quite interesting, is that Kabbalah talks about light and vessel a lot. So when I'm talking and you're listening, I'm the light, so to speak. I'm the cause and you're the effect. You're the vessel. So if you're the one who's talking and I'm talking to you in my head, we're both trying to be the light in that moment and there's no circuitry. It's like a light bulb. There's got to be a positive pole and a negative pole for the, for the electricity to flow, for the circuitry to happen between us. So what we're doing and this, for the people who get misunderstood, pay attention to this. If the other person is talking and you're fighting with them in your head, or you're saying to yourself, here we go again, they didn't hear what I said, they're judging me. You're both trying to shove energy into a, a vacuum. There's no space there for, for you to, sh to give while they're giving. And being aware of the give and take or the, the circuitry of energy between you and any other person, right? What is the hardest thing to do when you're defensive, for example? When somebody is criticizing you or giving you feedback and you're defensive in your head, you are literally not letting it in. You are literally misconstruing their words in the moment. And so we want to pay super, be hyper vigilant this week about how we're taking messages in, what messages we are opening ourselves to, what me messages we are blocking ourselves from hearing. And I think more than anything, paying attention to that inner dialogue and being very cautious about how we are, show up when we're in conversations, whether we're in a group or one-on-one -on -one or even listening to a, a recording of something, how are we convoluting the message with everything else that is swimming around in our minds? You know, we'll, I'll, I'll close it with this analogy that will help people kind of maybe visualize it and taste it in their mouth. I was looking at this water bottle I have here. I have this water bottle. It's blue. 
Yeti water bottle. Not a paid promotion. Not a paid promotion. We don't do those here. And we, I remember one time I was warming up some soup. And so I put it in one of these like water bottles. We have like a ton of them at home. And then my wife comes and like, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm just warming up some soup, putting it in this bottle. She's like, do you realize now that whenever I drink water from that water bottle, I'm going to taste your soup taste this this butternut squash soup for the rest of my life (laughs) so now i can never actually connect with the water i'm having butternut garlic flavored water tinge of a little tinge a little tinge (laughs) and why this analogy is so powerful is when when (laughs) you see where i'm going with this right absolutely we we have to we have to keep the vessel pure and clean and when when we're listening to someone and we have a layer of butternut squash soup kind of like in our consciousness, it doesn't matter what they say. It's just going to always taste the same to you. And so that's the limitation. You're never going to actually see and feel and taste the true quality of what people are saying unless you've cleaned yourself out fully. Unfortunately, like the water bottle, it takes hundreds of washes before it can go back to what it once was, which was tasteless. So but how do you do that? Don't just throw that out to people. How do you make sure that you're not convoluting the, well, the I water? Think, well, I, for number one, I think just by people hearing what we're talking about today, they realize the, the, the need to wash. People aren't even washing their water bottles. That's the point. They're having soup and then pouring water in it. So there's like particles of soup in the water that can make it disgusting. So now we're saying, well, what I desire truly as much as possible as a cleaner and cleaner and cleaner vessel so that the messages that come through are pure and to your point the way we clean our vessel is just the desire to want to hear the messages more clearly that desire me wanting to start over me wanting to reset my system me wanting not to uh, close myself off from what people have to say or what the universe has to say is very uh, is very important. It's very important. Otherwise, you're just going to fall behind and learn lessons in ways that just accom- don't have as much mercy. So that's yeah, it. It's hard. It's hard for those of us that maybe have those conflicting desires of I want to be successful, but I don't want to work too hard. I want to be open, but I also don't want to be offended. Those are two very <laughs> conflicting, <laughs> conflicting desires. And and hopefully, with everything that we talked about today, the openness that we've created and that desire to hear the pure message to be the pure container not the butternut squash garlic container will will inspire everybody weekly energy boost is available on all podcast platforms as well as all social media outlets i guess or most of them at least Um, if you're listening now we'd love you to pause and rate and review and share with everyone share the episode even um Every time we find ourselves in the hands of a new listener, we're flipping, you're flipping on the light for having uh, shared it with them. And we appreciate that immensely. And also, uh, for those of you that are new to the podcast, you're more than welcome to go to weeklyenergyboost.com and check out our archives there and see what we think is interesting to share with our listeners. And we'll see you next week on the Weekly Energy Boost. Mm -hmm.